Oh shit, my gloves are in fire! My gloves are in actual fire! <laughs> James Watt and Martin Dickey are uh, back. I can feel that. To collaborate with the best brewers in the world Whoa. and brew a beer in the dumbest way possible. Whoa. Basically, it's the same shit they've always done. It's not bad. This is the Brew Dog Show. So at the end of 2015, the network cancelled their show. Probably because we're reasonably incompetent as hosts, people couldn't understand our accents, and I spent most of season one, two, and three almost naked. But what do you do for the network cancels their show? Comfort eat. <laughs> Comfort eat. We did that for many months in underpants on our sofa. After we'd done that, we decided, what the hell, let's start our own network. And now we're back. And we're not only back, we're back in Columbus, our adoptive American home city and the base of our US operations. After becoming the largest craft brewery in the UK, BrewDog has set up their first US-based operation in the city known as the heart of the heart of it all, Columbus, Ohio. Their first US brewery, centrally located with enough capacity to quench the thirst of millions of Americans, includes a bar with more than a dozen taps, cocktails featuring local spirits, all attached to a beer hotel aptly named The Dog House, which of course is dog friendly. So we're going to have to try and make a beer that captures everything we love about this phenomenal city. Greg Cook's from Ohio. Maybe we should call him. Yeah, let's do that. You should speak to me like you better. Okay. Hey buddy, how's it going? Hey James. Hey Greg. Hey Martin. We're in Columbus. Cool. What type of beer should we make here? Well, how's known as the Buckeye State. What's a Buckeye? It's a nut. Oh, that'll be perfect. We can make a big stout, put Buckeyes in it. Thanks. Can't eat Bye. Buckeye. Hey, that's my fucking phone. In addition to their brewery, the guys have opened a brew dog bar in the up and coming Franklinton neighborhood, where craft breweries and art galleries mix perfectly with factories and railroad tracks. It's the perfect spot to grab a beer and meet some friends. Every time we've come back to this city, it's felt more and more like home, and I love this location that we've opened in the heart of Franklinton. The people are amazing, and the beer scene itself is just going from strength to strength. And the first time I came to Columbus, I visited three breweries, Langrant, Rock Mill, and Seven Sons. So perhaps we could use all three of those and make a Columbus super collaboration. And Buckeyes being the state nut, it's going to work perfectly in a stout, I think. I'm so surprised that nobody has made a Buckeye beer before. They're going to love this idea. Yep. Mark Richards is a self-proclaimed big-time extrovert, Judas Priest superfan, and bearded legend in Columbus. As director of operations at Land Grant Brewing Company, he and partners Adam Benner and Walt Keyes have been making amazing beers since they burst onto the Columbus craft beer scene in 2014. Yo, James, you can't reverse the game on a Buckeye nut. Those things are poisonous. I think we need a second opinion here. Ancient folklore says that the seventh son of the seventh son will be born with special powers. So brewmaster Colin Castor used the powers imparted to him to gather his friends and create the Seventh Sun Brewery in Columbus. With meticulously crafted beer on tap, a comfy tap room, and a furry support staff working long me hours, really? This 5,500 square foot converted auto garage can be your home away from home in Columbus. They call them killer nuts because they will literally kill you. You don't look like a scientist, I don't believe you. Matthew Barbie is the founder of Rock Mill Brewery. Located in the sleepy town of Lancaster, Ohio, on a former 1800s horse farm, Rock Mill is legendary for its Belgian-inspired brews and its one-of-a-kind scenery. You told him it was poisonous, right? We can come back to the Buckeye thing later. If we're going to make the ultimate Columbus beer, I think we should really taste some beers made in Columbus. A lot of beers. So I brought my Petit Saison for us to try. With the Petite, we really try to focus on accentuating the fruit esters. So we allow fermentation to free rise and ferment really high. And you guys are specialists at the kind of farmhouse Belgian style. Yeah, the brewery's on an old horse farm. The minerality of our water is very close to Wallonia, Belgium. So we brew uh, all styles of beer from that part of the world. Cheers. 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 It's really dry, a little bit earthy, some nice floral notes in there. Just the effervescence of a good saison, just how it kind of dances along your tongue as it delivers those flavors is fantastic. Carbonation is awesome on this. Nice and prickly. What are the hops that you use in this one? We use uh, Mandarina out of Germany, a noble hop. That's what we feature. We also have some Howler Tower. Let's just not 
Make a beer when we're here, let's just drink this. <laughs> what do you guys think about the beer scene in Columbus and how it's evolving? Well, uh, lately it's really exploded. And it's helping neighborhoods come alive too. Yeah, I think that having a brewery in a place, it becomes like a center for the community and people bring in their families and their friends and uh, it makes the neighborhood feel more like a neighborhood. Yeah. We were around the seventh or eighth brewery in town. We're now up to 43. And it's kind of amazing. It's uh, all these different kind of personalities and ideas and everybody's got their own take on it. Got a good community here in Columbus. Yeah, we, we get along with each other for the most part. Indeed. It's good people. <laughs> <laughs> so Colin, what have you got? I brought our Cumulus Nimbus Pale Ale. It's simple, light bodied. It's got that beautiful kind of citrusy aroma that everybody wants. Thank you. You can smell it from here. There's hints yeah. of tropical fruit coming out of this glass. Cheers. 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 It's beautifully crisp, refreshing, but you've got that tropical fruit, pineapple, and also some berry fruit coming on in there as well. I think this is the perfect Ohio summertime beer. Mark, what you got? Today I've got the Franklinton Pub Ale. It's uh, what you guys would know across the pond is an extra special bitter. So this is an English-inspired beer made in America. Now let's taste it to Franklinton. Yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers. It's got a really nice complex malt backbone, but you've got little bits of crystal and toffee and even hints of chocolate coming in there. Yeah, it's delicious. So what's a perfect way to enjoy this beer in this city? Really, we focus on the experience of getting together and having beers. Did you think, hey, let's go see a game, grab a six pack and know that we can drink all six of them while we're watching the game? Well, this city seems to love its sports teams as much as it loves its beer. Absolutely. How about if we brewed the beer at the Blue Jackets Stadium, the nationwide arena. I love hockey. I think it would be awesome to get on the ice. And we can maybe even turn the ice into water and use that in the brewing process somehow. Just kind of the logistics of we're going to have things with propane and fire, and we're going to have things that are boiling. So how exactly are we going to go about brewing beer on ice? Well, we've got this guy called David, and if he's not dead, I'm sure he can help us out. I think he is dead, because I sent flowers to his wife. Let's dig him up. <laughs> <laughs> and coming from Columbus, and Columbus being such a big hockey city, you guys can all skate, right? I have never strapped on a pair of skates in my life. Never been on ice skates before. I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to brew a stout, and we're going to brew it in the nationwide arena. Leave the Buckeyes to me and James. We'll sort that out. You guys in? Come in. Yeah. Come in. To Columbus. 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 Cheers. Situated in the heart of downtown Columbus, Nationwide Arena was built on the site of the historic Ohio State Penitentiary in the year 2000. It's home to the NHL's Columbus Blue Jackets and the centerpiece of a vibrant downtown area. You'll be anything but a prisoner as you watch hockey in an arena that ESPN the magazine voted the number two stadium experience in all of professional sports. Suck it, Miami. What an incredible idea to brew this beer inside an ice hockey arena. And not just any ice hockey arena, the nationwide home of the Columbus Blue Jackets. People in this city love hockey and they love beer, and we're going to combine those two things. And we're also going to be reunited with David. I wasn't sure what was going to die first, David or the show. Turns out it was the network. David! You're not dead. How's it going, man? Good. Hey, David. Good. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you. I didn't know there was going to be lunch in this thing. Love a hot dog. Enjoy. <laughs> bon appetit. So this beer is just for you. We know you're a massive ice I hockey am, fan. I am. So we're making ice hockey beer. Cool. You need to help us figure out a way to do this. Are you going to do it on the ice? We can ice skate, but yes. <laughs> David, wait until you see this. This is going to blow your mind. Oh. And like any monumental moment in life, it's better enjoyed with a beard in your hands. Cheers. 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 David Donnelly, welcome to the Nationwide Arena. Fuck. Excuse me, sir. Where's the ice? Season's over. Oh. Looks like you're going to have to hook us up with some ice as well. You've got this. Well done, David. Was that Ken Rossman from Sierra Nevada cleaning the ice? It did look a lot like him. I think it was him. Was it? Thanks. While David figures out how to set up the rig, the boys head back to college to see if they can get some much needed answers about those pesky Buckeye nuts. We're here at the beautiful, if slightly ostentatious, main entrance to Ohio State University. No, they wouldn't let us film there, the fuckers. But we did speak to someone from OSU who said we could totally put Buckeyes in this beer. 
Again, no, a scientist with a PhD categorically told us that buckeyes were highly poisonous to both humans and animals. This was supposed to be a whole segment. What are we going to do? To be or not to be? That is the question. I didn't know you were a Shakespeare fan. Who's Shakespeare? Making beer with nuts is actually quite common. Nuts impart a sweetness, an earthiness, and a beautiful mouthfeel to any beer. Pecans, pistachios, and chestnuts are commonly used in beer and have been for hundreds of years. But their oils are bad for carbonation and head retention, so most brewers rely on nut extract. Nut extract is also the best thing that can possibly happen at the end of a first date. But the Buckeye nut presents an entirely different challenge. It's full of toxins, including glycosides and saponins, that cause weakness, paralysis of the muscles, and gastrointestinal distress to anyone who consumes them. Which is a fancy way of saying pants disaster. Who says we're not an educational show? Ohio State University does. We've been over this. Those guys are nuts. Yep. Welcome to a nut lover's paradise. We are here at Coleman Tree Farms to find the perfect alternative nut to put in our beer. If I was a squirrel, I would live here. When we're done, do you know how we're going to pay for these? No. Cashew. Founded in 1987 by his father, Joe Coleman and his family have grown the Coleman Tree Farm into a profitable operation that harvests thousands of pounds of mouth-watering nuts each year. Did I really just say that? So what are you guys looking for? Well, we're making a beer, we wanted to put a buckeye in it, but apparently they're poisonous. Just a little bit, yeah. What do you call a, a buckeye in a spacesuit? Having a clue. An astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start off with the black walnut, that's my main prop. And this is a sparrow black walnut, which... <laughs> it didn't taste that good, to be honest, Joe. Okay, I'm gonna hang on to this one. <laughs> okay. You wanna try to crack one of these? Thank this you. nut's too big for the hole. Well, I'll try to get your nut in there. That's what she said. Joe, two peanuts were walking down the street. One was assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> and what can you tell us about this type of nut? It's a real earthy, tasty nut. It's got a real depth of flavor. I think it'll it, be really nice in a stout. <laughs> all right, well, we get a lot more to taste, so don't fill yourself up. No, I, can, I can eat a lot of nuts. I have seen James with so many nuts in his mouth before, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Yoder number one. It's a hickory. These are my best sellers and my most expensive. So this is the good stuff. This is pretty tasty. Pretty creamy, a little bit sweet. Nice texture in there. A hickan is a cross between a hickory and a pecan. I've never heard of this type of nut before. It's the favorite nut on the farm. Yeah, Have at it. it. Yeah. It's amazing, such a like, depth and intensity of flavor in here. If this is one of your favorite nuts, we've got to use this one in the beer. But it'd be good to use a blend. So maybe this one in the Buckeye nut? A Buckeye nut. I think it's just a myth that they're poisonous. Okay. So that's a Buckeye. That's a Buckeye. If I eat this, will I die? You got health insurance? We don't have that in Scotland. Wait, did you eat it? Yeah. Wow. Dude, I thought you were just joking around. <laughs> that was a chestnut I just gave you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it looks just like a buckeye, but the difference is that tip, if you pick up, you're not sure if it's got a pointy little tip, then it's a chestnut. Okay, I hope that is an accurate way to identify the two different types of nuts. Absolutely. Otherwise, we are both in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I think we would really like to use the hickan and the black walnut in the beer. They're not in season. They're not in season. Well, I'm harvesting green black walnuts right now. What's a green black walnut? Just an undeveloped walnut. The nut hasn't formed yet inside. How do you harvest them? Well, I'll show you. Okay. Sounds good. Undeveloped green black walnuts are known for their unique love it or leave it taste. Harvesting them involves climbing really, really tall trees. The perfect job for James, who's embarrassingly, pathetically, absolutely scared to death of heights. Really, it's not pretty. All right, fellas, this is the tree we're gonna be picking. Okay, I'm scared of heights, I'm bad at climbing. Have you got any last minute tips for me? Don't fall. Let's rig you up. And Joe, with these jobs, I think it's, it's really important to just tell everyone how equally dangerous both parts are. 
like climbing up the tree and also collecting the nuts. Oh, absolutely. My son received a concussion from dropping nuts. Now, when you get up there, I'm going to pass you the, the big stick. stick. OK. Good luck. Godspeed. Thank you. Is this high enough? No, keep, okay. keep on moving. So, connoisseurs of mediocre TV who've seen the Durango episode will have remembered that I said I would never do anything like this ever again, except I am, and this time it seems even more dangerous. Got this clip, and then I'm gonna clip it in, and then I keep going. Is this high enough, do you think? Once you uh, go up to that fork. Apparently there's, uh, there's snakes as well in this tree but they're just two feet long, which essentially just makes them worms with teeth. Can I put my feet here? Do you think that's a good place to put a foot? Just keep it close to the trunk. They're quite a bit higher up, James. OK, oh, I'm super high now. I'm about 50 feet up a tree. I'm terrible at climbing. I'm scared of heights. And we're trying to get some nuts to put in our beer. Whilst Martin is just hanging out down there with Joe, chit-chatting. The whole tree seems to be swaying quite a lot. It does. Ah, my buttocks. I'm kind of stuck. Three points of contact. I'm going for six. I've got my tummy squished up against it. <laughs> my left thigh, <laughs> both hands, and two naked feet. You're doing great. Go ahead and lay right there on that branch. Like a baby koala. OK, here comes your tool. I thought Martin wasn't coming up. Ah. Oh, there's a beauty here. Martin, are you standing by with your nut wizard? Already. One. There you go. OK, Martin, there's some good ones in here. OK, we've got two. Do you think that's enough for the beer, Martin? We need, what, about four or five pounds? You're doing a fine job down there. I'll either be catching the nuts or catching you. I think it's got about a 50-50 chance of being either at the moment. Come on, you fucking nuts. <gasps> These ones just don't want to come off. I think that's a very carefully manicured tree over the last 30 years that you're just decimating. Uh oh The best walnuts are up high. But I'm super high. But you need to go higher. OK. I can't believe I'm doing this. <sighs> There's actually some way down there. No, th those are better up there. OK, I'm taking your right The higher back. you can get, the better. And sure, the ones down here at our height, are they actually fine? We could use them, right? Yeah, they're exactly the same. I can't feel my legs. I'm a bit dizzy. So all these ones here, Joe, are absolutely fine. They're uh, Yes, they are. Do you think this is going to hold me? It'll hold me. It'll be fine. Oh, my goodness. Do you think it is going to hold him? It is bending quite a lot. <laughs> Martin, there's some beauties up here. I can't believe I got this high. OK, I think that's plenty. OK, Joe, how the hell am I going to get down? Just lower that leg down a little bit further and then just swing out. That's like you're dismounting a horse. <laughs> I hate horses as well. <laughs> if I can get down in one piece, I'm going to be very happy. <laughs> I think that's not how it's supposed to work. OK, it's a good job I didn't know that at the top. You have gravity in your favor. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want it to be too much in my favor. Ah. We normally don't climb that high, by the way. <laughs> I'm just going to lay here and just put some nuts in my mouth. Sure. Oh, they're horribly astringent. It's taking the surface off of my tongue. Tasting these, we're definitely not going to use these in the beer. So I've just risked life and limb for something we're not going to use in the beer. How much you get for the nuts that I've just picked? All of them? Yeah. 20 cents? <laughs> because the hardest earned 20 cents I've ever made. Well, 10 cents, half of it's mine. <laughs> what it's do not... people do with this? Normal people don't eat them. Where these walnuts will end up is a distillery watershed. Now, they make this nocino. It's some Italian liqueur, I guess. I, I just give them the nuts. I think we need to at least investigate that because if I'm thinking that they're going to make a spirit with that, I think it's going to be disgusting. But if they go to the effort of making it, then maybe they can do some magic with it. Trust me, it's, it's good. I would love any spirit at this moment in time as well, so that sounds perfect. In conventional television, when you go somewhere, you usually start outside the building. But to hell with convention, we've landed in a warehouse. A warehouse full of whiskey. Perfect. 
Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you guys doing? Good, I'm James. I'm Greg. Greg Lehman is the master distiller at Watershed Distillery, who've been serving the Columbus community some of the finest crafted spirits in the Midwest since 2010. You can try their homemade vodka, gin, bourbon, or signature nochina, an extremely rare black walnut liqueur, which is exactly what the guys are here to try. So Joe said the Nicino was delicious. We'd love to know how you managed to make something delicious out of those not so good tasting things that we oh, had yeah, in our mouth yeah. today. You tasted worst. the green ones? <laughs> it was the worst thing we've ever tasted. So astringent and bitter. It's interesting that you tasted the green ones. They don't taste great. No. Uh, but it's amazing what happens when you mix it with a little vanilla bean, some citrus, a little bit of cinnamon, and then let it sit for a bit. And as it ages, it starts to oxidize and ripen. Uh, and then we do add some sugar to it, and that helps a little bit also. So do you think it would be possible to actually try some of the cheese? Yeah, we'll see what you think a year later. So these ones were picked almost a year ago today. Uh, we'll try it right out of the bottle. God be with you. Oh, it smells good. Oh, you don't drink it all at one time? <laughs> it's phenomenal. Like unsweetened chocolate, there's like some date flavors in there. You get that kind of citrus peel hit, yeah. and just that nice little almost kind of festive Christmassy kind of spiciness in the back end. This is amazing. Can I have some more, please, Joe? Yeah. Thanks. We did something really cool last year. We put some of our Nocino in barrels. You guys want to try it out of a barrel? I don't even know what it's going to be like. Well, it tastes even better than that. Barrels usually make everything better, right? I think you could dispense an entire one of those into Martin's mouth. I could keep my thumb on it and go slow, or I could just let it roll. I don't even know that. <laughs> if you said that to someone in a nightclub in Scotland <laughs> on a Saturday night, you'd be all set. <laughs> oh, fail. This is definitely going to be the perfect thing that can go in our beer. I don't think I can handle any more in my mouth. Yeah, I you can, can. I can barely even speak. <laughs> Have you ever tried making an old fashioned, but instead of using bitters, just a little bit of Nicino? No, but I like that idea. Can we do that just now? Yeah, sure, let's okay. try it. Let's do that. <laughs> to the ultimate Columbus cocktail and the ultimate Columbus beer. Cheers. 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 All right, that's good. good. The Nicino old fashioned is now going to be a thing. It's gonna be a thing. It should be a thing. I like it. The beer scene in Columbus is as diverse as it is exciting. In addition to Rockmill, Land Grant, Seventh Son, and Brewdog, these are our top five breweries in Columbus. Founded in 1999 by a father-son beer drinking team in a small town grain elevator, our number five brewery, Elevator, has found itself at the top of the craft brewing scene with their award-winning beer. Trust us, you'll enjoy them on many levels. You can sign up for an Ancestry website or trace your own roots at our number four spot, the Lineage Brewery, a place that values tradition yet embraces change in their drafts. Knock down a few pints at one of their bar tops fashioned from the lanes of an old bowling alley and let history and beer orders repeat themselves. Ohio, are you ready to rock? Then head on over to our number three brewery, Four String, where their playlist consists of Belgian blondes, American pale ales, white IPAs, and summer wheat ales. Each string in this lineup will leave you road hard and put away wet. That's a term for horseback riding. Come on, get your mind out of the gutter. You'd have to be Meshugana to not try Zaftig Brewing Company, our number two spot, where they specialize in gravity-defying, full-bodied ales. Zaftig means voluptuous in Yiddish, and here the beers come with an even bigger ABV, just like your bubba used to make. Before Columbus was Columbus, the area was a hunting preserve known as Wolf's Ridge. Today, Wolf's Ridge is the name of our number one brewery, which recently took gold at the International Beer Competition. After a few of their Driftwood IPAs, you just might find yourself howling at the moon. It's Brew Day, and the boys are back at Nationwide Arena, where David's been working around the clock to set up the perfect rig to brew the ultimate Columbus collaboration beer. Gentlemen, welcome to the Nationwide Arena. Well, it's their practice facility, but it's the best we could do. I'm sure David's got an amazing reduce system set up for us, but we can't make a beer on the ice unless we look like ice hockey players. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your local heroes. Collaboration of the best brewers in Columbus. Mark Richards, Matt Barbie, Colin Castor, and a couple TV hosts. 
your Columbus Brew Jackets. Let's do this. Not associated with the National Hockey League, any sports franchise, or competent skating in any way. Damn it. He can skate. He is fantastic. It's like he was dead. Bravo. That was impressive. Wow, oh. David. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I should give you a hug and a bunch of flowers. As fantastic as that triple axel was, David, this looks absolutely amazing. You want to come check it out? Yeah, we do. Come okay. on, let's go. Martin, I'm going to be going down a lot today. That's what she said. <laughs> David has outdone himself once again, creating a one-of-a-kind brewery on ice. He's rigged a custom more beer brewing system to a sled that will be towed behind the Zamboni for the entire brewing process. What could possibly go wrong? I imported fresh Ohio spring water for the top two inches of this whole ice so that you can create enough snow to fill up our kettles and we can brew a batch of beer. Amazing and it will be circumnavigating the ice. How fast is this going to be moving, David? Six to seven miles an hour. That sounds like much faster than any of us can ice skate. <laughs> so gentlemen, I'll see you at the tasting party. Okay, good yeah. luck with your skating. Here you go. We haven't thought this through. I think the implications of an accident here and the Columbus beer scene overall would be quite bad. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, if you could stay and help us mash in, you guys are going in the sin bin. Can you take my stick? Thank yeah. you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Zamboni driver, hit it. So it's time to mash in. We're going to have near boiling liquid slopping about. We can barely stand up. And we thought you would be the best person to help because you look like the most accomplished skater. <laughs> I do what I can. Let's do this. We've lost the word. Just mash in without me, guys. I can catch up. <laughs> okay, I'm back in the game. So this is our base malt, and these are the specialty malts. Beautiful. Yeah. It's going to really work well with these walnut flavors. Mm. Some beautiful toast coming through on that. Okay, James, have you got a paddle over there for mashing? I do. This also doubles as an ice hockey bat. I'll hold the bottom if you want to dump it in. He'll hold his bottom. <laughs> okay. Get me closer, get me closer. <laughs> Very hot liquid, splashing. Ice leads attached to my feet. <laughs> hold on, hold on. The corners are difficult. Let's see if we can put in some special in the same. <laughs> I've lost them. <laughs> it's okay, guys. We'll get you next time round. Guys, wait for me. That's perfect. Yeah, it looks great. Oh, that was so smooth. We'll just edit out the bit where I fell over. <laughs> and it smells incredible. And this kind of cold ice rink, and you get the beautiful coffee, chocolate, roasty flavors coming off the roasted barley. Beautiful. Let's hope we've never got to do that again. <laughs> what we need to do now is collect more of the snow off the top of the ice so we can use that as sparge water. Put me in. We've also enlisted the help of the people that collect the ice in between periods at the Blue Jackets games. It's quite intimidating. <laughs> so rather than you guys teach us how to skate, which might take a while, how about we just stay here, hold the buckets, and you can spray us with ice? You want us to spray you with ice? As long as you don't smash into me, and as long as I don't lose a finger, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> it's like my criteria for a good Saturday night. <laughs> Oh, they're coming at it quite fast. Oh, no, 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 no! I think more went in my face than went in the thing. I touched the end of it. It's so cold. This is the worst way I ever will make a blue. Whose idea was this? Get hit me! This is like some kind of weird torture. Okay, stop it. Enough, damn it. There's enough in Martin's hair to make beer with. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think we've got plenty of snow for sparging now. I'm completely soaked. Thanks to you guys, I've got snow in my ears.
takes beer to make beer. Yes, it does. So this must be one of the most unusual ways you've ever made a beer. Absolutely the most unusual way I've ever made a beer. Garland, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Colin's holding up for dear life. <laughs> if I take the lid off, you can hold on with one hand and uh, dip in the ice. There's a good chance. And you, you seem very at home on the skates, Colin, so he this, noticed. this should go he really noticed. easily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and by very at home, <laughs> it means you're maybe slightly worse than we are, which is really bad. Okay. Here, I'm gonna take off the uh, glove for this. Just really get in there, you know? Just yeah. watch for the splashback. Whoa! Oh, oh. That would sink the Titanic. Okay, that's the uh, snow back in, topped up the water. We now need to turn this gas burner on. <laughs> oh, I think we got it. Uh, I almost lost yeah, a finger. Come on! Okay. Oh, we got a man down. So now we've got ice. Humans barely able to stay on their feet, blades, naked flames, a lot of gas, and now we're getting transfer liquid between vessels as well. Oh, oh shit, my gloves are in fire! My gloves are in actual fire! <laughs> my gloves are in fire, boys! <laughs> it's fine. Somebody will pick that up. <laughs> There we go. This is actually working. Yeah. Sparging is one of my favorite stages in the beer making process. And it's the first time you can really taste a little bit of what the beer is going to be about. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, man. It's got a great depth of flavor, a lot of really nice chocolate and roast in there. And I think it'll go really well with the Nacino, which we'll put in later on as well. How's it taste? Delicious. Tastes good? Whoa. Keep your gloves away. <laughs> <laughs> Now that the heat's on, we're going to continue transferring across, lid on, bring it to the boil, and then we're going to switch you out, Colin. That sounds good. You've done I, a fine job. I have avoided dying so far. It's always our main objective as well. Yeah. Mike, you're up next. We're going to swing around and pick you up, buddy. Yeah, down that beer. It's what you need before you go on ice. Something that reduces your sense of balance and coordination. Colin, you've done a phenomenal job. Thanks, man. I'm yeah, ready. Right, switch thank you. Mike, pick up. Tag out. All right. Come on, Mike. I got it. Gotta catch it. You gotta I got it. it. I think we can do this. Oh, this is a beautiful scene. That's not bad. Eh? This is good. It's like the climax of a romantic comedy. Looks like a baby deer out there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Okay, we've got this. All right, you ready to go? And the great thing about the boil is that it'll sterilize. <laughs> <laughs> we now have eight ounces of Magnum hops because two ounces are on the ice. So we're gonna have a little bit less bitterness than we envisaged. I think we needed less anyway. <laughs> Going in. Let's do this. So next up, we've got two different types of nut. Though all the guys were able to find at the farm was green black walnuts, luckily Joe had a few of last season's walnuts stashed away. <laughs> that Joe and his nuts. We want all of these? Why not? More the merrier. And we also have a second nut. These are hickan nuts. So it's a mix between a hickory nut and a pecan. All right. You're doing great. You're doing great, Mark. You're natural. Next up, cocoa nibs. Just with all the nuts, just gives it so many levels of depth of flavor. Let's do it. it smells incredible now. Next up, we've got some amazing Tahitian vanilla. Vanilla is one of the most incredible flavors known to man. In you go, baby. I think it's a good idea to kill the boil now that vanilla's just gone in to keep all that flavor in there and then add the final two ingredients. So we're gonna add a little bit of lemon zest. Oh, that, that was quite good. Pass it to Mark. It's more appeal than a zest, so we'll go with it. <laughs> if you're in a position to criticize, you can take over, sir. Yeah, I'm happy with my position here. <laughs> so the last ingredient is this amazing Nacino. Good pick, I love this liqueur. Adding Nocino will raise the ABV by boosting the total amount of fermentable sugars in the wort and will add deep earthiness to the flavor profile, along with spicy overtones from the green walnuts. It's like one of the most fun and most stupid days we've ever had making beer. Cheers, guys. Cheers. It's a really great flavor. It tastes really wintry, which is perfect when you're in an ice rink. Should we drink the rest or add some? Oh, fuck that. We'll drink this. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So guys, remember my glove that went in fire? It's actually over there. 
You just throw a buck out in there. That would be reckless, stupid and irresponsible, and I am none of those things. Look at that beautiful colour, smelling good. And we're using all the ice we've got here to cool it down before we pitch the yeast. And at the same time, you and Mark are building a beautiful bond between you. <laughs> this is as close as I ever want to be to your buttocks. <laughs> Almost perfect for pitching. It feels just a little bit too hot though. Okay, well, I think the Zamboni driver's been collecting some more snow, so we should get that up. Welcome, hey, Colin. Welcome hey. back, Colin. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> so let's get the carboy around the front, pack it a little bit tighter, get it to the perfect temperature, pitch the yeast. All let's right. do that. Sounds like a plan. Oh, wow. Whoa. <laughs> Thanks, man. This is perfect. Just knock it down a couple of degrees. Perfect temperature for fermentation. We've got a nice English ale strain. Perfect for big esters coming out of this stout. Martin, I think you should let one of our guests pitch the yeast. Let's do this. So many of the things that make Columbus phenomenal have ended up in this beer. We've made it with some of our favorite local people in one of the most iconic venues in the entire city. Cheers. 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 Thanks, guys. To hell of a day. All the best things come in fives. Dollar bills, digits in a human paw, players, and an ice hockey team. Here are our top five beer bars in Columbus. Though their names suggest otherwise, there's nothing diminutive about our number five bar, the Half Pint in downtown Columbus. Just a few slap shots from the nationwide arena, help yourself to a selection of 60 beers and a PB&J burger that you and your inner eight-year-old will love. Mom won't even have to cut the crusts off. Who says you need a passport to travel the world? Just head over to our number four bar, World of Beer Easton, where you can sample more than 200 beers from around the globe. Trust us, it's more fun than getting patted down by a TSA agent for leaving a single quarter in your pocket. Coming in at number three, Bob's Bar is a beer lover's paradise. With a selection of nearly 250 beers and a knowledgeable staff, you'll find yourself calling your wife to say you've left her for a man named Bob. And when she sees his beer list, she'll forgive you. Fado is an ancient Irish word to start a story, so you should start your own story at our number two bar, Fado, where they strive to recreate Ireland's rich and ever-evolving pub culture. With a list of dozens of international and local beers, you'll pray for the luck of the Irish when you settle up your tab. Looking for the number one beer spot in Columbus, Ohio? Pat, I'd like to solve the puzzle. Founded in 2012 by John Blakely with the money he won on Wheel of Fortune, the Daily Growler has been named the best growler fill spot five years in a row. With more than 60 unique beers on draft, his winning streak continues. James and Martin are in Columbus to brew the ultimate Ohio collaboration beer. And now it's time to share it with some neighbors in their adopted U.S. home. Hello, Columbus! Hello! So this episode is obviously very special to Martin and myself in our new adoptive hometown. When we got the nod to do another season of this TV show, there was only one place we were going to start, and that was right here in Columbus. <laughs> Columbus was obviously named after the famous TV detective Columbo, <laughs> who discovered the city right at the last minute when you didn't think he was going to. <laughs> we wanted to brew a beer that was fitting for Columbus. Buckeyes are synonymous with Ohio. We thought they'd be the perfect addition to the ultimate Columbus beer. Turns out that it might be slightly, possibly, just a tiny bit poisonous. <laughs> so there's definitely, definitely no Buckeyes in this beer. De definitely not. You might need to sign a disclaimer before you taste it, but there's, there's definitely no Buckeyes. So we went to visit Joe at Coleman Tree Farm to find an alternative nut to put in our beer. James climbed 30 feet up. We're like 60 tree, feet up. About 130 <laughs> feet up. <laughs> and picked down some walnuts. Oh my goodness. I'm kind of stuck. Ah, my buttocks. But the problem was, it's not seasoned for harvesting walnuts. So they were green. And we tasted them, and they were absolutely fucking disgusting. <laughs> this beer was going to be absolutely nuts. <laughs> Talking of which, What's the most infectious type of nut? <laughs> a cashew. <laughs> Watershed are an institution in Columbus. We tasted something they make called Nachino, and that's what we put in this beer. We made the beer at the Nationwide Arena. The home of the Blue Jackets. And we actually used the ice of the arena to make the beer. And we brewed that beer with the help of our awesome engineer, David, who made an amazing brew rig behind a Zamboni machine. We got three of our favorite brewers from around Columbus to help us make this beer. 
We had Matt from Rockmill, Mark from Land Grant, and Seven Son Colin. And the best thing was that none of us could ice skate. We don't play ice hockey in Scotland, so I think after spending eight hours at the Nationwide, I'm now technically the fifth best player in Scotland. <laughs> so we brewed this beer on the ice rink. We threw in some lemon peel, some cacao nibs, some vanilla. So I really hope when you taste this beer that you absolutely enjoy it. We had an absolute blast making it. I'm going to let you guys see how we like to taste our beers in Scotland. If you take your time, if you get to know the beer, it's good to open up to you. This is what we do. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? Then when you taste this beer, you need to get it in contact with all of your tongue. Your tongue's not just for talking or whatever you guys do at the weekend, it's for tasting. <laughs> so this is how we do it. Mmm. 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 You should get a mountain of bitter, unsweetened chocolate. You should get earthy, woody, spicy, nutty notes in there. There's vanilla, there's bourbon, there's nutmeg, there's cardamom. There's a hint of citrus, and at the end, there's just the faintest hint of the Buckeyes that we definitely, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> that we definitely didn't use in this beer. <laughs> so what did you think of our Columbus beer? I thought it was great. I loved how complex it was and all the different flavors that came out. I'm a big dark chocolate fan, and I really like the bitter taste. Great flavor. It tastes like Ohio. Out of 10, what would you give this beer? One. It's not very good. Oh, wait. Oh. 9.7. Oh, that's a good score. Well, it's got to leave room for improvement. What were your thoughts on the beer when you tried it? That's a bit harsh. There's some fundamental brewing faults in the beer. And I don't know what to tell you. What do you think of our ultimate Columbus beer? It's great. I mean, as long as it doesn't kill me, there better not be Buckeyes in this. Have you ever tasted a Buckeye? Only once, but I'd like to tell them. And do you taste the Buckeye in this beer? And what would be a good name for this beer? What would you call it if I let you name it? Suck up my nuts. Suck up my nuts. <laughs> Cheers to that. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Sorry, her dad. Before we ask you what you think of this beer, we'd love to get Matt, Colin, and Mark up here with us. Guys. <laughs> And we really hope that you enjoy this beer. So if you think that this beer encapsulates everything that's fantastic and great about Columbus, on the count of three, raise your glass and shout cheers. One, two, three. Cheers! I just want to thank on behalf of James and myself, these three amazing brewers for hanging out and helping us brew the ultimate Columbus beer. A Buckeye Stout with absolutely no Buckeyes in it whatsoever. <laughs> Guys, thanks for hanging out. We love you. Good night and God bless America. Woo! And Scotland. Yeah, and Scotland. <laughs> How do you get a squirrel to come down from a tree? I don't know. Pull down your underpants and show it your nuts. And that's why I'm banned from most public parks in Scotland. I would imagine. <laughs>